you're on the post, you hit the big game. I want to start off by saying thanks to Finn for organising this and setting up, and for yeah. Simon and everyone else here. Put any seats on the front. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I think I actually took the photo and designed our poster as well. And so, to kick it all off, uh, to give a bit of backstory, um, so me and Eli were co directors and co writers, co producers, and everything. Uh, we met doing 48 hours last year, and along with that nah, is over there. And we sort of originally talked about you know, doing your traditional thing, like doing a few shorts and all that kind of thing, and then I'm not sure if it was my idea or yours. Probably. I think it was yours, but just to just go straight into doing a feature, and Eli had the original idea, and we sort of expanded on that a bit. Um, do you want me to give a basic rundown of the story for those yeah. that don't know what it is? Um, so, at the time I was living in Wairarapa and um, I'd kind of make the commute over the um, Rimotaka Hill um, to Wellington to hang out with Jason and make a few videos and that sort of thing. Um, and on the way I was listening to a CD that my mum gave me and on it is uh, the greatest recorder player in the world. Um, and I thought, I thought that was a bit of a kind of good joke and had a laugh as I was listening to um, and playing some like 6th six, six century tune or something like that. Um, and kind of our film grew out of that. Um, so basically, um, Two Idiots in the Tin Whistle is about a musical talent quest um, set in Porirua. Uh, we've got kind of five main acts, a piano, a banjo, a guitar, and two recorder players. That's right, two recorder players. Um, and yeah, basically, kind of America's got talent, but <laughs> really budget and terrible. Um, and so, yeah, it's a mockumentary film and um, filmed in Polydor. Yeah. yeah, so we originally started writing in August last year, so it all came together quite quickly. So, once we had our initial concept, we talked to Matt more about the music side of it. But then he also offered, see, so a teacher at Pro College, offered the location as well, which basically meant we had to be finished filming before school went back. So it was literally like the last week before school went back. It was our main block of shooting. But we got it done. Actually, a day ahead of schedule, which is quite good. Um, yeah. I'll we'll get back to you about auditions. Actually, yeah. before we do that, sorry, because I skipped part ahead of myself. I'm just going to get everyone to introduce themselves first. <laughs> So, you already know who I am, so you're going to pass it along. Um, oh. I'll wait just Why that's mine? I'm Jess. Uh, I play Freddy in the film, and it's not the red recorder. Um, yeah, that's just pretty much it's me. I'm passing this down. Yeah, I can yell. Yeah, I was like, we can yell. I'm Libby. I play Alex in the film. She's the piano player. She's pretty cool. Nice, nice Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm Louis. I'm Giovanni, the guy with glasses up there. He's kind of the main protagonist. I feel no, he's not. He's not a nice man in the film. Um, and yeah. Can I just keep going? Oh, man. I'm Grant. I play Cletus, the um, pumpkin banjo player. Yeah. Katrina, and, um, camera assistant. I helped out with. Uh, I'm Hayden, and I was a sound recorder and a post sound as well. I'm Finn, I'm a color grader. And I'm Matt, I did the music and had a cameo as the middle guitarist. <laughs> well, um, so we got the script ready, or at least semi-ready in terms of we knew our characters and that sort of thing. So next step was auditions. Uh, we put up a listing on Star Now and as you can see we got some really solid acts. <laughs> um, I got it from where? I got not get it from Star Now. Sorry? You're I the thought, exception. Yeah, you're where. the exception. But, um, <laughs> so 
put her up on Star Now. We'd never, we'd never hosted auditions before, and I think our, between us, we'd only ever been to one audition in our lives. So we were probably the most green um, people in the auditions. <laughs> And so yeah, had, it, had our auditions, um, I think we pretty much cast everyone that auditioned, um, but that, that doesn't mean to say we just kind of filled a role. Um, these guys auditioned multiple roles and we kind of found the one that um, suited their character. Uh, and I think maybe one of you guys, Jess or Louis, had a story about your audition, being freaking out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I, I walked in because I auditioned for a, like one character, like, yeah, it's like a real small character, and then before it, I was like, hey, like I can never play the other one. I remember walking in and freaking out, and I'm like, hey, can I audition for a different character? Like, I just had no idea. And they're like, yeah, sure. Like, they were real chill about it, honestly. You probably had a, I think you had a funny one. So I auditioned for um, Giovanni and Freddie, we do, uh, we've seen the film quite polar opposites, and I uh, auditioned for Giovanni first and that seemed to go okay, and then I got about five words into Freddie, and you know what, that's fine, you can go. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty scary at the time, so I was like, oh god, they hated it, but it turns out um, that we so just, just like me for Giovanni, which isn't actually a very good thing, <laughs> but he liked me for that at the time. So, but yeah, at the time he was terrifying. I thought like he just done really, really bad. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do you have your yeah. uh, I, I was a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was self tape, which was a, it's, it was a benefit for me. I rather than being the stress of the room, and the lad sent me the uh, army. There's an army character that's sort of like a major, and he was more my age group because. The, car the character Cletus is actually was supposed to be sort of 30s, so wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. And I, was, I thought, well, bugger, I'll do it. And so I made my self tape, and I, it was just a one taker and put it together for the lads, and they liked it. So fortunately, and you know, playing a fuck what. Mm. <laughs> and he did the army line rehearsal and it's good to show yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever hear that um, So yeah, we, we had our auditions, got some really solid acts. But um, we needed to fill a couple of more roles. Uh, so, post on Wellington Actors Facebook group, uh, and that might have been where you came yeah, right. from, right. um, yeah. and a couple of others. And then um, one of our actors mentioned uh, the lead actress in his play. And so, I went along to the play, watched the play, Libby was amazing, um, and asked her to be in the film. Um, and um, yeah, she's, she's great. <laughs> um, and kind of our final final thing on casting was um, we created some roles in the film really short, uh, so the actor only had to be there for a couple of hours on one day. And we thought, well, let's try and be ambitious with this. Let's just put out the message to as many, like, I guess, kind of well-known people as we could. So. We emailed the Prime Minister, the Mayor of Florida, um, Flood of the Concords, like a bunch of filmmakers, actors, musicians, basically anyone we could, even an all black I think at one point. Um, and we we got um, denied by most of them. Um, yeah, some yeah, 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 yeah. So. Um, the Prime Minister was nice, or at least her assistant was. <laughs> uh, but in the end, um, persistence and lots of emails and um, messages on Twitter and that sort of thing paid off and Karen O'Leary from Wellington Paranormal came and joined our film and acted and was amazing and was super funny and that was kind of a, a real buzz that day to have her on set. Yeah, there's a clip I'll play later of the improv scene that she did with Louis. Yeah. Just hilarious. Yeah, so yeah, she kind of just walked on set. Um, <laughs> with a beer. Yeah, she with, yeah beer, beer. beer in hand in between takes and um, yeah. It was pretty cool to be able to land her in the film. Mm. Yeah. All right. So after we got our cast together, so Aaron, the film's done like a mockumentary style. It's also a handheld and things like that. So our initial thought was that we'd better crew most of it ourselves, between the two of us, do like a proper Rodriguez or Archie style kind of thing. But the more we thought about it, the more we realised that it was probably a bit too ambitious. Mm. So we went to start now again to get some more people, and that was only. 
mid-December, we were starting to shoot uh, mid-January. So it was pretty short notice. We got a bunch of people from like film school and a few others that came on board, and everyone just got right into it and gave it 110%, which was really good. And yeah, it's quite interesting. I had people that would be hired for one thing, like Katrina, for example, just came on as a camera assistant, and then she had a stunt background and a couple of few scenes and little things like that. And our two boys over there um, signed on just to do sound and then... Yeah, Finn was only on set for one day as a sound boy, just to be doing a colour grading, yeah. so... Yeah, roped it. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. And yeah, it all worked out pretty well. Um, so, this being our first film, um, we didn't apply for any funding or anything like that. It was all coming out of our own pocket, so just money we'd saved up. So um, all of our roles were unpaid, um, but we kind of made sure um, to have catering because there's nothing worse than being on set with a rumbly tummy. Um, and the catering ended up pretty good for the most part. A couple of, <laughs> couple of mishaps, dietary, um, issues, but dietary issues. But, um, but now we managed to get someone on. That was pretty good. And um, aside from that, like food was, Food was a big expense, equipment, hire and rental and, and buying a couple of things and um, then petrol vouchers for um, the people who drove because most of our actors lived in Wellington um, and kind of commuting to Potidura each day so we carpooled pretty hard and saved the environment a little bit and <laughs> some cash. <laughs> um, and other than that, uh, we also paid for a location outside of the school and um, other than that just a few props and that sort of thing but the school was super handy in terms of just lights and um, props and, and musical instruments and that sort of thing so yeah <laughs> yeah so it's uh, was a mockumentary style uh, the main reason we went for that was Pais actually were handheld so it was a great quick turnaround the whole movie was shot in a total of 10 days it was one weekend shoot and we came back a week later and did uh, eight days. And then it also gave us that sort of freedom where it doesn't matter if you screw things up a little bit, like stuff goes out of focus or you get a boom and shot and that kind of thing, it all just plays into the style. So it just helped us just shoot really quickly and yeah. But it's quite funny, you've got to the point where you'd be thinking about how to do a scene and in your head you want to do it nice and sort of stylized and make it look really cool, but it doesn't play into the mockumentary thing. So now it's uh, on the back of us for the next movie. Mm. Um, Pre-production. Uh, Jason wrote two words here, soul destroying. Because um, <laughs> uh, at the same time, like before the film had begun, we are kind of working on pre-production, um, doing kind of shot lists, um, scheduling which scenes are where, um, and oh, I've got a whole list here. But, um, but basically we're doing that, also working our full-time jobs and kind of, you know, doing a shot list in your weekends isn't the best way to um, have fun. <laughs> a shot list alone took an entire day. Yeah, yeah, it was, a fun time. It, yeah, it was, it was, it was long, but, um, but having said that, it was, all of it was pretty handy to have. Um, we, we didn't look at the shot list a ton while we were filming, but just kind of having gone through it and imagining how you want the shots to be gets you thinking, gets your thinking off the paper, off the script and kind of into the visual. So we started doing storyboards, but I think we got well, like three scenes in and just ran out of time. Yeah, but yeah, it was, it was a pretty tight time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so then into production, um, it was the first sort of big thing like this that I really worked on. I worked on a short film as a camera assistant before, but from stories I've heard and hear about movies, I think our shoot went pretty smoothly. There's no major issues. Um, we only had one day where it wasn't available, and it was supposed to be, but that was pretty easy to rearrange. Um, well, our biggest issue was when we did our shot list and stuff like that, it gave us an estimate of how long each scene would take to shoot. But we ended up being heavily overestimating what we'd done, so everything was just finishing a lot earlier. So it became a case of trying to figure out who we had on set and what scenes we could bring forward. And basically ended up with us, I think, finishing like a day and a half ahead of schedule. Mm. But being the, the downside being that we're in Quay Row, so a lot of people went back close and we were already on set when we were like to do. Um, yeah, and our 
show for Jeff Springer did the cards. <laughs> there was, I've never seen <laughs> such a competitive game of last card before. Yeah. It got preheated, but it was good fun. And yeah, I think we're just really lucky as well. Like everyone got along really well. There's no people that sort of didn't fit in with the group. And yeah, we went to Kendall Week together again. And yeah. Um, and then on to post production, which is Soul Destroyer. <laughs> Number two, um, and only only number two on the list because you'd already kind of made the film and you could see it coming together and you'd already had a bit of fun. Whereas the pre-production was kind of like, oh, what are we doing this for? <laughs> um, but so we pulled out our best takes from the camera reports and had a bit of a review. Transferred them to some SSD um, drives. And alone for two yeah. days. And um, just in terms of equipment, um, for some reason there was this massive SSD shortage around New Zealand at the time. So Jason had like these four solid state drives plugged into his laptop and he couldn't even plug the power cord in at the same time. So there's this real kind of jiggly sort of a, didn't look too professional, but hopefully. Actually got some bigger ones. Yeah, right, so. yeah we'll work on that in the future. Um, in terms of the mockumentary, again, helped so much in terms of uh, if we were doing uh, kind of full, all these various camera angles and that sort of thing, it could have been much trickier to match up, whereas mockumentary, quite a few of them were one or two shot kind of takes. Um, although there was like a couple <laughs> of continuity things, but we, we got around them. Probably, probably the hardest thing was uh, matching the X performances to Matt's music, which he'd recorded. Um, we had music on set, like playing through a speaker, but then it was, it was like, so you generated it in the computer and then you re-recorded it afterwards. And it sounded more natural and you yeah. didn't have to line up, it was a bit tough. Yeah, um, but we got there in the end, I think there was like a few messages sent back and forth, and um, one final Sunday we just kind of busted it out and got it done. But, um, Massive credit to our acts because pretty much, like, almost none of them had played their instruments before, and um, you know these two, yeah, yeah, they, these two managed to um, even play some songs on the recorder, which will no doubt be good to act, add to their acting CV because I, I think there's a few Hollywood productions out there looking for recorder players. <laughs> Top of the list. Top yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, so before I say my next one, I know Matt, you said you had a bit of stuff prepared about music. Did you want to say a bit? Uh, about yeah, that? just to say that um, yeah, that final push there to get things finished, it was a bit of a challenge. Um, being that I was in my place and Jason and Eli was at uh, Jason's place, and um, sort of there was a lot of back and forth. And okay, so it's oh, so that means fixing. Okay, sweet, I've got that. No, that wasn't the bit we meant. <laughs> and so in the end, we. Okay, this, we seem to be in the same room for this, and yeah, and then I realised Jason lived about 10 minutes from me, and he's like, why didn't we just do this the whole time? Yeah. But um, yeah, it was, it was a hell of a lot of fun writing all the music, um, and I, I had put things out there to the Wellington the Musicians Group on Facebook and go, um, does anyone have a banjo I can borrow for the set? This is prop, and then I'll be like, well, some guitarist, some bassist. Um, I might just learn how to play this a bit because I'd rather record it for real. Um, and then Ben, who runs Valhalla, of all places, gets back to me and says, yeah, I've got a banjo, you can borrow that. <laughs> and I go, and if you know Ben, he's got you know, long dreads and a dreaded beard, and he's like, oh, good And I was like, Ben, you play the banjo. Banjo. <laughs> yeah, I got real into it five years ago. I was like, okay, well, we can fight some boat. And um, yeah, so writing for banjo, writing for recorder, trying to make it sound Good, but also terrible, mm -hmm. but purposefully terrible. You know, this this person and also thinks, matching up to what they're already playing. Yeah, this person thinks that they're amazing, but no, I, don't want to, I don't want to give any more away about like what the style was for some of it. Where it's like this is so say something. This is horrendous, but it's, you know it's meant to be. You know, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's so much fun to do. And you said about your output as well in terms of producing a lot. Oh yeah, just smashing out more or less an album's worth of stuff and 
couple of weeks. And also, yeah, they actually physically smashed something as well. <laughs> oh yeah, like, didn't know who bring that up. <laughs> Six miles. So I had a I had a Jim Dean promo guitar that I've been given, and originally I thought, oh, I'll donate this to school. Um, so I have to take the Jim Dean stuff off it because it's for school. I never, never say the tune. It's an absolute piece of shit. And I mean, you know, this is only good for one thing. So I, when I said like, I want to do the cameo as a metal guitarist, I spray painted it bright green so it looked like a horrendous 80s guitar. I wore a Slayer shirt and a big black wig and leather jacket and black jeans and boots. And so I did a big solo and then he threw it off the stage <laughs> and smashed it. And uh, yeah, I mean, who hasn't wanted to do that? <laughs> it looks great. And it looks great in the movie too. Yes. <laughs> so happy. <laughs> So next sort of thing that's moving out that we've done without the editing is with uh, Finn and Hayden doing post sound and color grading. Uh, once that's sort of all done, we're looking at posting a screen, just like cast the crew already once you can see it. And we've been talking about just because we can, just gonna go all out and do like a black tie, <laughs> make us feel important, make it have a premiere kind of thing. And then we'll start looking at some festivals, like definitely New Zealand Film Festival, um, a few Australian ones. And then a slightly more obscure one with the Catalina Island Film Festival. The connection we've got there, and we'll see how those all go. And yeah, fingers crossed. Right. Um, and then kind of beyond this, we're, we had such a great time on set and that sort of thing, and I think um, everyone got along pretty amazingly. Um, and so kind of as a kind of tin whistle collective sort of thing, um, looking at a couple of future things in the future, um, Jason and I are brainstorming hard for the next feature film, um, and we're, it might be a little bit, a uh, little bit in the future because we're looking at getting funding so everyone can get paid next time. <laughs> um, uh, other than that, kind of got two shorts or a couple of shorts um, written up and and, and kind of looking to do them at some point um, to bridge the gap, a couple of little short film festivals and that sort of thing because you've got to kind of exercise that Keep making yeah. muscle and creativity and all that sort of thing. A lot of our past and growth have already given us ideas. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah every, everything's I've written. Yeah, everything from short short films to web series yeah. to features and that sort of thing. So it's, it's kind of funny how everyone in the business is so creative. Great. So that's basically our story of this movie. Does anyone have any questions? Yes. Um, I mentioned you like want to show up at festivals and stuff. Yes. Are you guys try and talk to like distributors at all to get them into theaters? Yeah. So I know from what I read on the New Zealand Film Festival website, they have a sort of loose bit with them. They try and sort of bridge a connection there a little bit and try and potentially sell to people. They don't promise anything, but yeah, we'll sort of play see how those go first, and if nothing comes out of that, then we'll start looking at the distributor side of things. Yeah. Yeah, pre-production I was kind of, like, you know, Googling like, how do you get people Yeah, all that sort of thing. So kind of kind of looked at those avenues, but gonna but kind of hit the festivals first and then look into it. Yeah, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to come and chat. Uh, if you want to find more of the movie, there's a bunch of us in there. Shout out. What was the Yeah, so like I said before, originally the concept was Eli's, yeah, then we kind of thought no one would want to call it an asshole for the entire movie, so... Yeah, like, and it, it, it kind of originated as Giovanni was going to be the main character, but then... Still kind of but, a Yeah, yeah, but you've got to kind of like the main... Oh, you don't always have to, but it helps if you semi-like the main character. So it kind of... Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it developed a bit, um, and then basically the writing process was just a couple of weekends, basically locking ourselves in each other's places and just kind of um, first on paper, kind of I think we had like ten um, just yellow line paper um, pages full of um, basically the plot and, that, and and our characters and that sort of thing, um, and then we wrote it. Um, when, yeah. when we first put it in the script format, it was only about 60-something Yeah, pages. yeah, so we were, we were short um, to start off with, and it's kind of like um, limitations um, breed a bit of creativity. So I think some of our best scenes actually came um, later when we were trying to, I guess, not quite, I guess we were trying to add, basically, pages and time to the movie. Um, and that like introduce some new elements to the plot and that sort of thing. Yeah. You guys want to say anything else? <laughs> you look at your bed and say something really about it. Always about the 
say something. Say it. <laughs> no, no, I don't. <laughs> Process. I mean, these guys obviously had a really good idea of what they were, you know, bringing to us when we started on day one of filming. But in, in saying that, they were definitely very open-minded with everyone yeah. on set. You know, not just the actors. Like, I think I should do this with my character because we definitely developed our characters a lot on set. But anyone that was there would have an idea, even if it wasn't always done. Because still, the writers and directors they they definitely took on board everything. And, I mean, it, it wasn't a closed shot. This is what we've written. Yeah. This is what it's going to be. It's like this is what we want to happen. But if there's something that you think is going to be fits the character more, yeah, fits it. Or, yeah. Or, yeah. If, if you look at the script and then watch the movie, they're not going to be the exact yeah, same. The so there, were, there were a lot of changes, especially mm. individual characters. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, definitely, definitely help because you know you, you you build who you want to be or like what your character is, and with them they like work with you with everything, and mm. I think that helped a lot. I guess that's where some of our best character moments came yeah. from, is stuff that you guys just did. Yeah. It's and new characters all together. <laughs> <laughs> and, and part of that was probably um, the whole thing about when we were filming, we were slightly ahead of schedule. So if, if we'd been like massively behind or something like that, it kind of limits your ability to be creative on set because you're like, I just got to get the shots in kind of keep moving. So um, that was pretty handy. I think one part of it as well was that. Um, like I didn't know, the only person I'd actually met before this was Jason. He had been in um, film for 48 hours. Yeah, we mm. hadn't actually met in person. Well, we'd met in person just before when we were you guys were checking out the school. But um, I think because we were all hanging out, eating together and all that kind of thing, there was a lot of really good banter and lots of funny stuff. So it actually all kind of, it was a really nice unit to work in and a really kind of good culture that while we were all working really hard and really long hours and stressed and tired and rest, it was still open, it was still good. Like, yeah, so that can be any of them and by the end of it, yeah, we're all shattered and we want and we're glad it was over and at the same time quite sad that it was over because it had been so much fun. And it been like, wow, all these sort of new friends and and it just kind of clicked together really nice. Mm. And it's it's was like a really good time on the set. Yeah. So many good times. Yeah. I just read for the Filmmakers here, what was the tip that you guys used? Like, what was the rig? And also, the main camera and, was actually right there. And reversal like period. <laughs> uh, Black Magic 4K pocket. And then we borrowed a bit of gear from a few people like lab mics and lab mics and stuff like that. Rented a little. The lab mics cost you the most in budget, eh? That was, yeah, that was our one rental thing. We got lent two lab mics, but then we needed, there was a few scenes where quite a few people were rented three or four? I think. Yeah, three, yeah. They weren't cheap, but it was uh, definitely helped, like, yeah. yeah. And rehearsal period? I might ask you because that's probably something you would like yeah, to do. Yeah, that's good. Rehearsals, November through to December kind of thing. Um, and then everyone was pretty busy over, like, Christmas yeah. and New Year's. It, it, was, it was really good, though, because, like, our, our filming was kept down real low when we were actually filming, but beforehand, I think we had, like, well, I think it was like three weeks, I only attempted one. <laughs> but um, I they actually had a single rehearsal where everyone was there. So. Yeah, basically, where they because they, we got the scripts real early, and then they had these, like, I don't know, like five hours on a, on a Saturday or Sunday where they went through different scenes to see how it played through. And that definitely helped because we all met each other, we figured out what they wanted from our characters and things like that. And so when we all got on set, we all auto automatically had an idea of like what was going on. We mm. had to move to like, the set and everything like that. The blocking changed a bit. Yeah, yeah. Bit, but, yeah. but having that time forward definitely cut down on filming time, like different takes, where we were able to play with it a little bit more and then work with everything. I mean, there's very few issues in terms of like you guys missing up lines and everything like that. Mm -hmm. It was pretty rare. The only rehearsal thing that we couldn't rehearse was the fight because we weren't in the space to actually yeah, know yeah, the logistics yeah, of really, like, yeah. you know, the, either the pool table's here or the table's there. So. We had to rehearse that's that. That's why the scene you And that probably took yeah, yeah, most yeah. of the time. Yeah. And from what was actually written, it was actually scaled down for what the actual molded mold, the the set, what yeah. was holding us back in the actual space. Yeah. Yeah, I think rehearsals are definitely a big key to yeah. Yeah. keeping yeah. keeping it. Well, it's kind of set your own lines. I mean, yeah. It's almost like treating like a stage show type thing. Yeah. 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 Like we'll, we'll go through the whole script. It once, puts it put the muscle his character for me, it put the muscle memory in. So when we're on set, we have to stress out about doing it because it was already in, in the rhythm, you know? Bit, yeah. So those three five-hour sessions were really valuable. Yeah. 
And that's all it was. It wasn't like having to give up a whole every, you know, couple of nights of a week. It was just one afternoon for three three days. You know, it wasn't a, it wasn't a big ask, but it was definitely worth it. And the asset of turnaround and, and actually being a heavy schedule. You know. See it run through a few times. I think um, being open to characters as well because it's kind of a collaborative thing. Um, so you kind of discover a new side to the character and that sort of thing when um, they when they try things. Um, when the script changed, like we got the we all played a scene mm. in the third draft and then it changed by the time you yeah. actually shoot it. Like, yeah. 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 I think a big thing I learned was just like everything about sound. Um, <laughs> I remember one day, um, it wasn't when you were there, someone else was there. We got to the school and there was this digger with this big jackhammer on it from right outside where we were first filming. Yeah. And it was, yeah, like the first day we were filming at the school and, and kind of my heart just sunk. But then we, our scenes that day weren't too, um, Bad in terms of sound, you can you couldn't hear it too much, and remarkably, the digger with the big jackhammer never returned. The so, session down a couple of old yeah. classrooms at school over the summer, and I thought, oh, it should be done by the time we're doing that. It's a week before school goes back. Surely they'll get it done. They're done you yeah. know, and then, then literally first day of filming. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, right, but yeah. <laughs> Stop though. So that's the biggest thing for me was just how much truth there is in the the saying about how it's all about the people you surround yourself with and yeah. it's going to work and it just brings the, the quality of the project up so much yeah I think definitely like um, like Jason and I only met at 48 hours last year and we kind of especially through like um, yeah especially through quite a few of the hard times we kind of pushed each other through mm -hmm. and that sort of thing and, and you both got different skills like I turned up late here I'm not that organised Jason's <laughs> really organised um, and all that sort of thing. So you kind of like balance each other out and just having having other people as well, you can get excited about projects and that mm. sort of thing with helps and talk things through and um, and yeah, like just having a great cast and crew just it's like huge. That was the one. <laughs> one of the things I've found weird coming in to meet these guys is that they found it hilarious when we were producing, which was like, really encouraging, but you're like, are you guys nuts? Because you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, it's just Jace particularly. Like, <laughs> you know, he just fucking loses lunch overseas, you know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, like, I mean, you're like hungover or drunk, acting hungover or drunk oh, in God, some scenes. Yeah, but it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Operator, just losing our shit completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I had to walk out of the hall, I was yeah. just like, this is too funny, I can't deal with this. I, I got cast for it, and I had my tooth, I had, had a full mouth of teeth, and then I had a, a, subsequently had a tooth infection, had the, had the tooth out, and I was like, guys, uh, before I, because I was a couple of days before I took it out, and they told me, so I put a piece of duct tape over it, which is that <laughs> picture up there, yeah. and I said, uh, <laughs> this is probably going to work, you know, <laughs> being a bunch of uh, banjo player, and they, and they were like, yeah, no, that worked. <laughs> so I've got my new tooth on Friday. So, <laughs> yeah, so I didn't go full Christian Bale. I just, uh, just, <laughs> just synchronicity, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we sort of assumed that Sammy got the role because of the missing tooth. <laughs> 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 found out that, oh no, that came out after the missing tooth. It was just synchronicity, it was just worked out pretty well. Does anyone ask any questions? Yeah, question? Do you have something to ask? Oh, yeah. What was the editing process? <laughs> how, was, how long did it take? Uh, we wrote it down, I think it was like seven full days and then two weeks of him working five hours each night after, after work. work. Yeah, so like. Pretty, I think the fact that it was that mockumentary style made it a lot bigger as well because a lot of scenes were long takes yeah. and long shots. Only mm -hmm. a few cuts, yeah. which means, yeah, sped it up a lot. Mm -hmm. 
One thing that took us longer than we thought it would was reviewing all the footage and that sort of thing. Um, you know, like transferring from the SSD? The yeah, the, you wanted to use. the transferring was all two yeah. days. And at one point, I think you deleted well, all the files. Yeah. One of our hard drives, it was our main backup hard drives. And well, I think it was a late night. And, yeah, formatted on hard drive, so we didn't have to leave it running for the rest of the night. Copying back off the other backup. Yeah, so backups would have been handy. Imagine if we didn't have backups. We'll be sitting here right now. <laughs> nope, have backups. I think the, the mockumentary style is really a great thing for these guys, it's just as an outsider as their first full feature, because you don't have to worry about sticks or, you know, getting your, your, everything. Mm. So, so for an actual, getting a project done and actually done on time, it's a really great. Um, format to a, a mockumentary or documentary style mm -hmm. to get something that your project actually done because it's like a lot of it, you know, with continuity and etc. It's like um, I think it was definitely a benefit, eh? Mm, yeah. You know, yeah. like it, it definitely made the thing mm -hmm. flow. And then hopefully having the actual completed project will help us when it comes to trying to get funding for something else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just that shows we can actually get it, get yeah. it done. That's not in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So they take eight dollars, we take two. If they've got five hundred students or five hundred parents and groups and family members to come, they're gonna make two K from it, we're gonna make a grant. Well, you know, you want masses on that. But it's gonna put put it to the grassroots of what and but also give us or give the lads the wedge back of their investment. But it's actually it's basically like taking it on tour, really. Um, this, I've already talked to the education board, they've given us the contacts. And I used to tour um, school um, theatre, so it's actually a really practical way to do it. And giving them the carrot of saying, hey, you can make money from a night that they're going to have, then they're going to make a couple of grand, which we would like to, I mean, I, my idea for the lads was is that the money goes to them getting their own camera lights set up to make their own films at the school. We turn up as a couple of the actors, and you know, either of the lads turn up, tell them how we did it. So it actually puts it in reality for these people and, you know, Ikerahuna, Napier, but there's so many places that, and it's a great way to fundraise as well for the school. So it's a win-win for everybody, but if you actually think about doing three or four nights a week, making grand, making four grand a week, for us, so that's actually a good turnover thing as well. So that was just a way to actually turn it into an industry to actually invest back into Tin Whistle. If anyone's interested in doing anything like that, um so I put my teacher hat on and go as a music teacher and at Poly River College and so there's actually money now from the Ministry of Education to get creatives at the schools. Mm -hmm. yeah. So to actually fund things and go, let's get people in, actors and directors and that kind of thing to work with kids and, and that. And you can mm -hmm. find on the website or you know, hit me up um, on Facebook and and ask me about it. Too. So if you're looking for you know, money, you're money to, to get paid to go with your attention and stuff. Sorry, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it with that, you get to say yes. You will be sorry. <laughs> Yeah, get some work 
Um, and you can do it as a, you can apply yourself or jointly apply with the school. And yeah, and there's plenty of schools that are really you know, keen for that to happen.